Well, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the farm. Today got a project going that has been in the works for quite some time, but uh, due to just being busy and all sorts of other stuff, haven't quite gotten to it yet. So last fall, found some fruit trees that were on the, uh, that were kind of put out for clearance at the end of the season and was able to get those picked up for about 60% off. Uh, fruit trees are not, tree, trees in general aren't uh, super cheap, so it was nice to get them discounted. Um, I should have gotten them in the ground last fall, but I didn't, unfortunately. So uh, now it's spring, it's warmed up, and um, I think only about two of them didn't bounce back. That's my fault for not getting them put in the ground. So did lose two of them, but uh, gonna go ahead and get those planted today and get this orchard started. So I got this area prepped over here. Work over here next to the uh, next to the chicken coop, kind of back behind the chicken coop. Uh, the big tree there, that is my big old pear tree. Uh, that is a super productive, I mean thousands and thousands of pears off of that tree. And then these two little ones here in the foreground, those are, uh, uh, what were those? Oh, Golden Delicious apples. Those got planted a year ago. And yeah, gonna get, I think I have four peach trees, three cherry trees, and two apple trees that are gonna get planted down in here. So that's nine more trees I'll be adding to the little orchard area over here. Uh, don't plan on that being the end of it. Would like to, to expand that a little bit more, but probably we'll wait until the fall again to see if I can't catch some more on, on clearance. You know, it's gonna be a couple of years before they're super productive anyway. So uh, gonna try to do it like most things around here, try to do it on the cheap. Now what I've done is I did a, I mapped out the spacing out here and I did it at 16 feet. The suggestion was 15 to 20 foot spacing on just about all of the varieties. So kind of picked a happy medium to make fit the space and picked 16. So we got a 16 spacing going on on our rows this way and then also have a 16 foot spacing going on on our rows this way. So got 10 trees marked off, only have nine trees, but got 10 spots marked off. And it's gonna be real easy to continue down this hillside uh, in the future if I want to expand to some more different varieties of, uh, of fruit or, you know, more of the same. But to make sure that our spacing in our rows ended up nice and straight, we used the long 100 foot tape measure and stretched it tight. We created a starting point, stretched tight from that starting point created our first line we measured off of turn for me camera we measured off of using the coop and using some of the trees back here to make sure that we were square on this side um, to, to create our first row and then we were we stretched this tape measure again at the 16 foot spacing and used a second tape measure between the first row that we marked and the marking on the second row to make sure that those were square as well um, not sure that that quite made sense, but probably should have recorded it. So we are bringing a little bit of a mechanical advantage to the party. Got the 12 inch auger put on the back of the John Deere here on the back of the 3025. So that will give us a big 12 inch hole to get started. Um, that's not quite a big enough hole. We do need to make it a little bit wider than 12 inches, but this will do the bulk of the work for me. So I can do that, get it nice and deep, probably gonna go significantly deeper than I need to, put that loose dirt back in the hole, give the roots somewhere to go down, and then come with the shovel and widen it out around the top a little bit to give it room for the roots to expand. But this will, uh, this will take away a lot of the work having to do manually with a shovel or with a post hole digger.
So in addition to widening up the holes a little bit more than that 12 inch that the auger is doing, we're also coming through with the rototiller and we're tilling up around it to try to get all the grass up, tear out the roots and stuff. So when we mulch around the trees, we won't have as much grass to contend with and we're gonna use some pieces of conduit. That was cheaper than getting T-posts. We're gonna use some pieces of conduit. We're gonna drive them in the ground and do deer netting around it because the deer pressure is just unbelievable around here. So we'll get some netting put up so they don't all get nibbled away by the deer. trees in the ground we ran next door over to my neighbor's Jim my neighbor Jim's house he has the horses got a good scoop of aged horse manure that's about a year old and we're gonna put some of it in every hole so whoops so there'll be some nice aged manure to amend the soil in every one of the holes that's gonna help promote rooting and help promote fruiting so this just kind of shows you how good this good and rich this soil is, all these worms. Don't know how well it'll show it, but the kind of the last thing we're doing before we put the mulch down and we're wrapping up is we're building, we're kind of building it up in the back here to build a little bit of a wall because we are on a hill here. So as the water sheds down the hill, we want to kind of encourage it to stop at the trees. So at each one of these, We've built it up a little bit on the backside, heading down the hill, just to try to retain a little bit more water. Got a bunch of manure in every hole, got everything topped off with a nice manure dirt mix. Got those little berms built in the back to capture the water. And now what I'm doing is I have got some wood chip mulch here that I am gonna go ahead and top off every one of the, uh, every one of the holes for moisture retention. Uh, lucked into this mulch. You can see it's not the prettiest looking stuff, but my dad just happened to have the trailer on the truck uh, about a week ago and was riding by some guys that were doing some tree work and he stopped and said, hey, will you load me up with some mulch? And they filled the dump trailer about halfway full with, uh, with some good wood chips. So I've got some set to the side, using some for this. Gonna end up using some in the garden beds to top off the raised beds with some mulch. Gonna add some manure, amend that a little bit more. Probably see that here in a couple of weeks. Well, probably a little bit sooner than that. Need to get on that a little quicker than that. But uh, yeah, going to use some of that, using it here, going to be using it in the garden. Look for that free stuff, y'all. I'm not sure how well it's going to show up on the camera here. Oh yeah, you can kind of see it. Got the deer netting put up around these first several here. Was a little bit short on material. Going to have to pick up another roll of that deer netting to get everything finished up. But this shows you what we got going on. So there are a lot of good buds and flowers on these trees right now, but I've already made the decision that if I do see any fruit coming in, I'm going to go ahead and nip off the fruit and I'm not going to let it develop this year. I want it to send, I want the trees to be sending all of their energy to rooting and to growing and not into producing fruit this year. So to go ahead and make sure that everything gets established and grows strong, I said going to go ahead and if I see any of those fruits developing, I'm just going to nip them, get rid of them, probably become chicken food. But, uh, Going to encourage rooting and not fruiting for the first year. So next year, all of that good rooting will be good fruiting. And just to show you one more time, it is worth taking the time to make sure everything's straight and square. Our rows, and while our poles might not all be straight and square, our rows of trees definitely are. And in a few years, when they're big enough and established enough, won't have to worry about having the deer netting out and all that stuff. It will be worth having taken the time and effort 
to make sure that the rows are straight. Just past the first two, those were pink lady apples. These next four are peaches, and these last three down on the end are the black cherries. That's what I'm most excited for. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Got to see a little bit of equipment getting used. Got to hear a little bit about accomplishing some more goals here at the farm. Increasing some, uh, some sustainability factors here. Growing more of my own food. Being able to uh, share that with friends and family. And all of the good things that come with fruit trees. You know, from fruit trees, of course you get all the great dessert stuff. You can do pies, cobblers, all of that delicious stuff. You can make wines. You can run liquors out of them. There's all sorts of cool things that we're going to be able to do with this fruit that we're growing. So really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to those projects turning into more videos. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, think about hitting that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, y'all, we'll see you.